I'm going to put together a fruit bowl that will enliven the spirit, elevate energy, and prepare the body for the day ahead. This is a combination of ingredients that I've started doing recently. And when I exited my 30-day fast, this was one of the practices I decided to do. I don't do this every day, but I do this probably four to five days out of the week. And I do it prefer preferably in the morning. So I start the day with a fruit bowl about an hour or two after I consume miso soup. I may not always prepare miso soup, but I can usually find time to put together a fruit bowl as it takes far less time than what I'm going to demonstrate here. So this preparation is a little bit more stretched out, um, mainly to explain the different elements. So I'm starting with blueberries that I had previously cleaned with baking soda and soaked in the baking soda and water solution for about 15 minutes to get rid of, rid of any external bacteria and other factors. Then I rinsed off that, um, that solution, right? And the entire time I'm using distilled water or spring water for this. And then I'm going to use the uh, lightly salted variety of wonderful pistachios because that's the one I prefer, 65 milligrams of sodium. I like the low sodium variety because I can taste more of the, um, the nut in this case, right? Versus when, it's, when you have more salt, then it kind of masks the taste of the actual nut ingredient itself. And I think it also absorb, it, uh, interferes with the absorption of some of those uh, vital elements that you see on the back of the packaging. Some people like to use granola. I like to use pistachios. By the way, I store the blueberries in water in the refrigerator because I find that it lasts longer that way. You're less likely to get mold. And the blueberries, raspberries, or blackberries will last uh, four times longer when you preserve them in water. I observed that one day when I was going by a smoothie shop and they were they had all their ingredients in water. It's like, hmm, I see the principle there. Anyway, I'm also going to add some dates. I love having dates in my fruit bowl. And in this case, I like the pitted dates because I feel that the presence of that seed inside the date keeps the date more alive than it is when it's already pitted. Okay? And so, while I do like my pistachios unshelled because who has all day to unshell pistachios? I know some people that I've talked to, they like to put a single a shelled pistachio in their mouth and crack it and they said that's part of the fun. To me, I like to put five to ten pistachios in my hand and eat them all at the same time. That, to me, is fun. So that's kind of how I like my pistachios. I like to eat them in bundles, right, rather than one at a time. So that's why I like them unshelled. And if I could find zero salt pistachios, that would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, unshelled organic, non-GMO. But with the dates, I find that when I compare pitted dates to dates that have the pits in them, to me, on my observation, and maybe laboratory tests will show something different, the dates appear to be more fresh for a longer period of time when you have the pits in them versus when you don't. And as I take the pit out and I like open up a date like this, I can hear a sound that I cannot hear in a date that's been factory pitted. And I noticed that dates that have the pits in them, they seem to have more moisture retained inside the date and you can get more of the, um, let's say the caramelized liquid in the flesh and the fibers of the date more than you um, will observe with dates that are already pitted. So that's, a, that's one of the reasons why I like those. 
And unlike shelling pistachios, uh, pitting your own dates, right? Removing the pits from your own dates is doesn't take nearly as long as shelling pistachios. So the trade-off to me is worth it. So um, this is kind of the baseline for my fruit bowls. And then this is optional, but I'm going to add strawberries because recently I've made an attempt to enjoy strawberries more, okay? And, um, and the strawberries may have been the motivation for the fruit bowl in the first place. But I actually do enjoy the fruit bowl with just the blueberries. But um, sometimes I like to add strawberries just to liven it up even more. And in some cases, if I run out of blueberries or I want to um, extend the amount of time I have with blueberries, right, extend the, the stock uh, of my blueberries, then I will just do strawberries. You know, there are, there are cases where the fruit bowl that you see here, instead of um, blueberries, it would just be strawberries, pistachios, and the medjool dates, right? You could also use um, ajwar dates and uh, sukar dates. Um, I have some of those, right? But the tastiest dates of all are medjool dates. So I tend to prefer those more than anything. And I do the ajwar dates and the sukar dates simply to create some variety and to move things around. And besides, those other two types of dates, they have less sugar per date compared to majul dates. So when I'm trying to um, calibrate the amount of sugar in the bowl, then I might substitute... Um, the majul dates with ajwar dates or sukar dates or even deglet dates, right? And so um, what I want to do is chop the, the strawberry into pieces, not for artistic effect. This is not done for artistic reasons. This is done for digestion reasons and for making it easier to consume this bowl because I will have several elements on a spoon, on the edge of a spoon, or a fork, right? And you want to make this uh, pleasing to eat as opposed to a chore to eat, right? And so that's why, that's the real reason why I'm cutting these strawberries up is so that they go through the digestion system more easily. Sometimes I'll even slice each blueberry in half if I'm spending more time putting the fruit bowl together. But on days when I'm kind of expediting this process, then I'm going to just do the um, bigger, more coarse cuts on the larger pieces like dates or like in this case, strawberries. But make no mistake, I prefer each element in the bowl to be cut and cut into the smallest pieces that I can. At some point, I plan on getting a grinder. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a spice grinder or a coffee grinder, and I'm going to start grinding up the pistachios, but I haven't reached that point yet, okay? But that's something that I'm planning for the future because... I want more of the food that I consume to be uh, cut, right? I want to buy it whole, intact, and then I want to cut it myself. But when I cut it myself, I want to get it to the smallest uh, port um, morsel that I can. So still the same quantity that you see here, but in smaller pieces than is depicted here. But this is a start. It's quick, it's very straightforward, and it does not take much effort to put together. So this is the masterpiece. So this fruit bowl does not work without this piece right here. This is the central piece. And this is what makes my fruit bowl different from any other fruit bowl. And I want to spend some good quality time explaining this. This coconut water, and you can also use coconut milk, 
And you can also use plain water, but I like the coconut water because that's just a little bit of a kick to it. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know my, my, uh, my uh, view on digestion. And it comes down to moisture and liquid. Moisture and liquid. I try not to eat things dry these days. And I try to lean towards foods that have liquid. So what I want is I want this, these elements to sit. They're going to sit in this coconut water anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. Now, the length of time depends on what else I add to it. Here I'm going to add some cocoa powder. A good length of time for cocoa powder to sit and saturate naturally into um, coconut water is roughly 10 minutes. Okay? It's roughly 10 minutes. And if you go even further back in some of my videos, you'll see that I have a way of doing coconut water where I either, either shake it up or I use a milk frother to, um, to integrate that in. I actually found that you need less time with a milk frother the longer you let the coconut, let the cocoa powder, the cacao powder sit in the uh, coconut water because the coconut water is going to naturally absorb it the longer that you let it sit. But you don't want it to sit too long because then you start having issues with the, um, with the coconut water itself. I'm going to add just a little bit of chicory root. Be very careful with this. Be very careful with this. So um, this, is, this is the most optional part. But be very careful with chicory root powder because your gut uh, bacteria loves chicory root. Okay? And then chia seeds. Now, we do have a warning about chia seeds. You definitely want chia seeds to, to soak. And this is a serious warning or your stomach will hurt if you don't follow this advice I'm about to give you. If you put chia seeds in liquid and you don't let the chia seeds fully form, right? And the ashwagandha is going to help create a soothing, calming effect with this, uh, this bowl and also a kind of a creamy effect. But it's important that you let chia seeds fully saturate anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Because if you consume chia seeds too early, they will expand in your intestines. And you could end up um, having an upset stomach or upset uh, intestines. And you, it will feel very awful. And you'll try to use the restroom and it will be difficult. And if um, that chia seed expansion happens at the wrong time then that can make for a very rough day. And I found that out on Saturday. And so that's why I'm putting this warning here, is that it's okay to rush the production of this fruit bowl like this, but chia seeds, don't rush it. If you have to rush it, don't add no chia seeds if you ain't got the hour to spare, right? So this type of preparation requires some forethought, some planning to concoct an absolutely nutritious and vital fruit bowl. And what I found is that this fruit bowl concoction, if you allow it to sit for 30 minutes to an hour the way that I am specifying it here, then you will be rewarded with great digestion. The motility through your system will be much more efficient. And you can also add hemp seeds to this mixture as well, right? So you can have chia seeds and you can have hemp seeds. And the combination of both will impart to you all of your amino acids or a large portion of your amino acids, right? And when you allow the pistachios to soak in this coconut water, it softens it up a little bit more so that it's more digestible. And the fruit and like the strawberry and the blueberries in this case, they go through the system very smoothly when they've been exposed to this. And so then I want to add another ingredient. This is stingless bee honey. I recommend stingless bee honey 
over regular honey or what we call regular honey because stingless bee honey, whether you get it from Australia or India or the Honduras, those are the three main places I know of that you can get stingless bee honey. This particular batch is from Australia, I believe, or no, that's the company that distributes this, but they source this out of um, Malaysia, I believe. I believe this is from Malaysia. But anyway, regardless of the source, stingless bee honey, it has more nutritional elements to it than regular honey. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is Stingless bee honey is lower on the glycemic index. So there is a larger number of people that can do stingless bee honey that may have a little issue with regular honey in terms of blood sugar because it has a sugar element called trihulose rather than um, regular uh, glucose or sucralose. It's trihulose. So it processes in the system more easily, right? And then with this concoction here, with the chia seeds and everything, and these particular strawberries and blueberries, you also have more fiber added. So the absorption of that uh, sugary aspect is slowed down even more, right? So that your body is able to get that steadier release of energy over the over the day especially if you work in a little bit more exertion in your activities in your work and in the type of work you do and so what i'm doing here is i'm stirring these up right i'm stirring these up and what i've demonstrated here i kind of rush through it a little bit but if you take more of your time and you let this sit for about 30 minutes to an hour you will have an even healthier and better concoction than you than you will ever experience otherwise. So I hope you have enjoyed this brief walkthrough on what I feel is a prime fruit bowl made simply and using organic non-GMO ingredients and adding that main ingredient of liquid, coconut water in this case, then you end up with something very vital, and very nutritious for diet, for health, and for energy. So if you have any questions about this, like, subscribe, comment, all the above, and we can discuss this further. But until then, try to recreate this, make this yourself. And when you try it, you will find that this combination is going to be the most savory, tastiest way to enjoy fruit you have ever experienced in your life. And eat well, Live well, and I will see you later.